I'd got up one morning and went to the area, general area where I've hunted, you know, my whole life, me and my dad. But I was by myself that day and um, and the way the mountain is, or if anybody knows about mountains, they've got benches. Well, I'm up on the fifth bench and there's the ridge of the mountains on up above me. And I get up there that morning, probably an hour or so before daylight set my stand. Actually, my stand was done there. I got up in it, sat there till about 10.30, nothing happened. Well, actually, I seen a coyote. And if anybody's ever seen a coyote in the woods, they never stop. They're constantly running. And I, I thought, well, I finally got to see one. I've killed some since then. But I sat there and I get down and ate lunch. And my dad and him was telling me about this. There's, they called it a gap, but it wasn't a gap. I believe it may have been an old Indian trail. But anyway, it kind of parallels. And this thing, it's two feet wide and just wore slick. It looks like half of a bow. I go to the top of the mountain. I took my tree stand with me. When I got up there, I'd found all kinds of deer sign. And uh, so I set my stand up. This was probably around 12, 31 o'clock. And it was, we always bow hunt in the later part of the year. So you kind of got the woods to yourself. And so I get up in the tree. I'm up there for probably about an hour and a half and I get bored. And I get my binoculars and I'm looking around. The ridge runs from left to right. And I see a finger ridge about 10 o'clock run off. It's probably about, I'm gonna say 80 to 100 yards long. So I see all these horn trees through my monoculars. I get down, I've got my grunt call around my neck, I've got my rattling horns around my wrist, and I've got my bow. I make my way down through there and I'm seeing all kinds of horn trees but no pawed places. So I hit my grunt call and my deer antlers together, you know, like trying to pretend two bucks are fighting. And I hear something to my right about 100 yards away over to the right where the ridge comes around. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, this is a buck. I'm getting a response. So I hit my grunt cock in. And when I hit my horns, as soon as they touched the second time, this thing tore off the hill. Only way I can describe it is either if somebody drove a pickup down off of a mountain or an elephant running through the woods. It come down off this ridge probably about 100 yards and it come up a third of the way on the hill. And where I was hunting at that time of year, it still had leaves. And there's a, if anybody knows uh, in the woods, got a, a lot of young white oak and beech with the yellow leaves i couldn't see nothing so here i am i've got my release on my bow my antlers are hanging on my arm and i'm looking 12 o'clock straight over the hill and it's probably i'm going to say maybe a minute or two at the most and i can see this finger ridge done uh, running off about to yeah about the 10 o'clock position and there's a beech tree probably 36 to 40 inches. I mean, this thing's massive. Well, I'm looking at 12 o'clock and then all of a sudden this thing comes out from behind the tree. And when it did, and I'm camoed from head to toe, face painted, snake boots on, it's all camouflaged. I'm, I'm all camoed out, even my bow's camoed. But this thing, when it come out from behind that tree, in my mind, I was thinking, oh my God, but why, okay, I seen the size of it, I would guess between eight and nine feet, but in my mind, I was replaying the sound coming off the hill. Okay, why are you there? Why are you here? What's there? I mean, you should be there. I should see something like that come from where I heard it run off the hill. So we have, we're at this time, I mean, my mind's racing. I'm looking at this thing's eyes and it's looking at me like it's puzzled and it's leaning its head. It'll go like that and it's leaning back and forth, but it's got its left hand or its right hand on the beech tree. And I can see it, its skin's uh, a dark weathered gray looking and then the fingers, the cuticle parts, they're not pink like a human, they were black, a real dark gray. And I'm looking at this thing and in my mind, I, I, I'm getting scared. I'm thinking, God, this is demonic. It's the devil. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I keep thinking, well, what, why ain't you there where I heard it run off and come up the hill? So as I'm standing there, I mean, my knees are like now, my knees was shaking so bad then I thought I was gonna fall. And this thing's got his right hand on the tree and is looking at me and it's, and I was trying to explain, it's brow ridge, it's just, it's not normal. It looked like a Neanderthal. It didn't have a snout like a chimp. It had human characteristics, had a nose, the nose was real wide, but it had hoods on it like a human, but it was wide. Its teeth, its teeth were real white, real blocky, and its lips wasn't fat like a human's. They were thin, and it had its mouth open, and I could see 
I could see the movement in it, of it breathing, but it was kept leaning like that, looking at me, trying to figure out what I was. And I was doing the same thing to it, but I was freaking out. I was thinking, you know, I'm hell, I'm going to die. And so we're having to stare off, and then all of a sudden, with its right hand on the tree, it starts leaning to the left, but it never turned its eyes off of me. It kept its eyes, and their eyes are massive. And it's like when they, I don't know if this is a scare tactic or what, but when I locked eyes on it, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. I couldn't do it, and it never took its eyes off of mine. So this thing goes slow methodically to the ground, and I'm still watching it because as it's leaning down, it's just looking at me, but it's squinting his eyes like it's puzzled and it keeps moving its head. But it goes down, I hear its hand hit the leaves, but I don't see what it grabs. So at that time, I'm just, my knees are shaking. I'm holding my bow, I'm quivering all over. I can still remember the antlers just kind of barely clanging together. And this thing, but when it comes back up, its face dropped. That's what scared me the most. It went from a puzzled look like, are you there? But I was in the wide open and so was it. But it looked at me like its face just dropped. And when it dropped, I mean, its mouth went closed for a second, then it opened it up and its face just changed. Its eyes went beady and it just, I don't know, I can't explain it. Its face melted, but it went from a puzzled look to aggressive. And at that point, man, I freaked out. I turned to my left and I go running up the hill and I drop my antlers, I drop a flashlight, and I'm running up through there and I've got my bow in my left hand and I have to put my right hand down. I'm 60 yards off the ridge and my feet are spinning. And when I get to the top, I look over my right shoulder and it ain't at the tree no more. This thing is coming at me. So I hit the trail going off the other side and I remember hearing my heart beat over my feet hitting the ground. And when I get to the bottom and make the turn, I have to make a little right turn to get down to my truck. This thing has crested the ridge and coming down the hill. And it, I mean, it means business. And it, it didn't have no puzzled look no more. This thing meant business. Now, earlier you mentioned its eyes and its teeth. Can yes. you describe the eyes and teeth again? Yes, sir. Uh, the teeth were white. They were real big and blocky. These things, I don't know if it's where its skin was really dark, but its teeth were white. No fangs at all. The, you may find some of them that do the one I seen at 30 yards. I mean, I mean, that's as close as I ever want to be to one. But I remember its teeth and its lips wasn't thick like a human's, but its eyes, I could see white. There wasn't a lot of white, but you could see the white on the outside part. And the crazy part was the, like where my eyes are like a bluish green or something. I could see a little bit of colors in those. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like a, a silvery look. Mm -hmm. I know I I don't know. I mean, it, I know it sounds weird, but that's what I seen. And you're 30 yards away. Yes, sir. That's close. And, and it's, it could have been less. And you told me it was daytime still. Yes, sir. About three thirty, four o'clock. So you had a really good look at it. Oh, yeah. And what were the size of the eyes? Oh, my God. They're, um, they're, they're way bigger. Uh, they're bigger than a golf ball. Way bigger than a golf ball. Mm -hmm. And what, and they're, I'd say, I don't know how far humans is, maybe three inches apart. These things were at least six, seven inches apart. The The head on this thing wasn't a conical head. It looked like a Neanderthal. It had a big, huge brow ridge. The face was flat, no snout. It had thin lips. Its nose was huge, but it was mashed, like somebody had mashed it. But it had still had the hoods. But I remember, like the forehead, the skin looked like old weathered gray, but it had dark lines in it. The lines were black but it looked like old weathered leather is what it looked like to me. And it's hands and where you could see the arms right here, not as much hair here. Chest, yeah, uh, quite a bit of hair, the stomach, but like from the stomach down, it was real hairy. The arms, the hair's three, four inches long on the arms, uh, but you could see skin, you could see skin through it. And it had trash and debris in it. Some of the hair was matted, like tangled up, it, you'd see like a leaf or like a little twig or something, but this thing was like that all over. Mm. I never seen its feet. I remember seeing its feet as it's coming down the hill, but I wasn't looking at its feet. I'm looking at its face, you yeah. know what I mean? Right. And that's when I run off over the hill about five benches sitting next to the last one. I step in a hole and flip. I get to the truck, throw my bow on the ground. I'm fumbling for my keys and get in it, and I tear out of there. But when I throw my bow in the truck, I broke the side off, and... And I'm looking to the left up on the hill and I'm thinking, I don't see it, but there's a curve. And I'm thinking, oh my God, since around the curve, there he's going to be, but he wasn't. 
he wasn't there. Yeah. And I'm glad because I don't know what I'd have done. Can you describe the hair? Yes, the hair was black. It was a, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't jet, jet black, but it was real, it was black. But on the ends of it was orangish yellow where the sun was shining through. You could see all over this thing, it had like a brownish orange glow to it. And maybe like an inch back on the fur, it was like from the brighter color to the brown. You know what I'm saying? Closer mm -hmm. to the skin, it was black, but the further it went out, it got to the a brownish and then like a light tint to it, like a, like a burnt orange or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. all over. And describe the, the, the neck and the shoulders again. The neck, like I told you earlier, the neck looked like somebody took this thing's head off, cut the whole neck off and shoved it down in a body. And where his shoulders were at, it looked like two bowling balls and the muscle, I don't know if they call them traps or whatever, but they were just massive. I mean, it looked like logs right here mm -hmm. and its arms right here were huge but like i said on the inside there wasn't as much hair and you could see the skin more but its arms what was so scary its hands are so big and its arms my god it's if it was to spread its arms out like this i wouldn't doubt if what it goes 12 14 feet its arms look like they're seven foot long mm -hmm. it was just unnatural the thighs were huge Below the knees got tapered, but you could see the muscle definition in its chest and in its legs and its arms where the muscles come down. And like I said, it was just, you could see the different muscle detail, and you, mm -hmm. but you could see the dirt and the leaves and stuff in it. There right. wasn't a lot, but when you've got something that's black and you've got a light colored leaf, it shows up more. Right. And you mentioned the size of the hands and the fingers before. Yeah, the hands, uh, oh my God, I, I mean, it looked like the fingers were seven, eight inches long. And the hands, this thing could palm a watermelon. I mean, if this thing would have put his hand over my face, it could have had its palm on my head and its fingers would have went below my chin. Mm -hmm. it, when it had it on that beech tree is where it was really defined. And when it was leaning to the left, you could see it. But when it had it flat on that tree, that's when I could see the fingernails. They was not claws. They're, they may have claws. This one didn't. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any claws. It had fingernails like a human. Mm -hmm. Did you smell anything? No, sir. No smell? No, because actually the smell was coming from my left and going to my right. Okay. The wind was. And did it make any vocalizations? No, no, sir. None no. at all. None at all. None. Okay. And you are in full camo. Describe your camo. All right. The camo I had on, if anybody hunts a lot, you can buy the oak leaf pattern. But I had, uh, there's a camo pattern out. It's got beech tree leaves for later in the year when... If anybody knows what a beech tree leaf is, it's small or it's nothing like a white oak leaf or a red oak. It's small and it's got oranges and yellows and dark browns and I had snake boots on. My face is painted and I've, if anybody bow hunts, you know, the bow hunter's hat, it don't have a big brim, but it's got a face mask built in too. But all this was painted out. And even I had gloves on. So, and the bank behind me is at a, a probably, I don't know how to degree it, but it's a good slope. It ain't a two to one slope, but I mean, if this thing was down below me looking up, it'd have been leaves and stuff behind me. But it was just looking at me like it didn't know what I was. Right. And I was looking at it like, what the hell are you? But I mean, my knees were shaking and I, I've never been so scared in my life. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. But it wouldn't, if it wanted to have killed me before I could have even turned around, this thing would have got to me because I remember when I crest the hill and looked over my right shoulder, that thing was done 15, 20 yards from the tree. It wasn't far over me. When I crested the hill, I could see its head come up. So it had done gained a distance a couple steps. And as I'm going down that hill, it's about 80 yards long, but I could hear my heart beating over mm -hmm. my feet hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. And I noticed I could hear it coming through the leaves, then I couldn't. And then I could hear over my heart ringing in my ears and my feet falling, I could hear its feet fall coming off the hill. And when I turned to the right and looked up, yeah. And these things, it's weird. I told you this before. They don't bob up and down like a human. They don't. This thing was gliding, but it was running. And it's weird the way it's running. Its arms wasn't swinging down as it's running. They were kind of like bent a little bit out in front, but it was still like in a sneak tail, uh, stealth mode coming off the hill. When you said stealth mode, Describe the stealth mode again. It's just like if anybody's watched a, a cat or a dog, how they can get down and move, but they just creep. This is the way this thing was doing 
but it never screamed or hollered. But I want to say something before that, and I remember this, but I counted it off as, you know, just sounds. But I remember hearing chirping, like birds chirping loud when this thing tore off the hill, and then all hell broke loose. But I don't know if it was actually birds or what. I really don't know. I mm -hmm. don't know. But I remember hearing chirping. Okay. And I mean, it could have been birds. But I know when that thing, the sound started hit running off the mountain, the only sound I could hear was my heart beating until it come out behind the tree. And when that happens, I lost all reality. I really did. Um, I can't explain it. In my mind, and people don't understand, it's worse than a fight or flight. It really is. In my mind, it was everything was racing a million times a second. The sound coming off the hill. Why? Why are you way up here, 70 yards from where it stopped in the brush? That's what bothered me the most. I thought, my God, how did it get 70 yards and I didn't see it? But you know, like you and a bunch of other people say, I don't think it was just more than one, because this thing had my focus running off the hill, and then this thing comes out 30 yards from him behind a tree. So you think maybe there's two. It had to have been, because how can something go from 30 yards and be in the wide open? I mean, you've got a little bit of underbrush and some mm -hmm. huge trees, but there's no way it went 70 yards from where I heard it stop crashing. And I could see the top of those young foliage moving. And where this thing come out, there's no way it went 70 yards without me seeing it. There's no, it, it can't happen. And you were making deer calls yes, and sir. rattling antlers. Yes, sir. I was hitting a grunt call. Like so they'll they'll make if I've I've actually and a lot of hunters probably watch videos or if you've been lucky like me you've actually seen them fight. They make god awful grunt sounds and stuff and and then they're fighting and that's what I was trying to mimic. And I've got uh, I've got deer urine on my feet. I've got a, a drag cloth behind me. So you know. I think this thing actually thought I was two deer fighting. From And then when it come out and didn't see no deer, that's why it had a puzzled look. Mm -hmm. And I, when it was reaching down, I thought it was going, when it turned and started going down in my mind, I was thinking, I'm seeing a bear. It's getting ready to go down on all fours and run off. No, it didn't. But I, thinking back, I think it was going to try to get a sticker and acre and fling at me to get me moved. But when he stood back up and his face went from, I don't know what you are, and kind of waddling its head back and forth. But when it would do mm -hmm. that, it ain't like a human how they can do this. This thing's whole upper body would move. It mm -hmm. ain't got a lot of side to side motion in their heads. They don't have a neck. Right. And I don't know, but he figured out I wasn't a deer when I took off running. You mentioned the face it had thin lips. Yes, sir. So describe the the shape of the face. Like okay. did it did it have a muzzle or was it flat? No, this was, it wasn't completely flat like a human. It may have protruded a little bit, but I remember its upper lip, it had thin lips, but I guess, I don't know if it's where it had big teeth in there. It did not come out like a, like you see a chimp. It did not protrude out from his face. It was pretty flat. It stuck out a little bit, but its jaws, you could see, that's another thing. You could see the skin under its jaws and its jaws were huge. I mean, I'm talking this, this wide its jaws were. And its chin, you could see its chin, but its brow ridge was no hair above it. It come up, no hair right in here. I've got a beard. It didn't have a lot of skin right here, but like from the chin down, it got real hairy, three to four inches long. Mm. But the face was a dark weathered gray, like real dark. I mean, darker than a slate gray, but it had, uh, it had wrinkles like humans get, mm. but in the wrinkles, it was black. I don't know if it was dirt but you could see that detail and its eyes were white, but as, the pupils or the iris or whatever you call it, and it wasn't facing the sun. The sun's to its right side, but it's in the shadow of this beech tree. But I could see like a shine, but it was weird. It was, it's not like in your eyes or mine. It was weird, but the eyeballs are, they ain't as, I'll tell you what, if anybody's ever seen a, a small lemon, where they're small, that's how that's how big these eyeballs were. Yeah, those are huge. Yes. What about ears? Did you see ears? No, sir. No, no sir. I couldn't see no ears. Mm -hmm. You could see the hair on its side, and maybe I could have seen the ears, the tops of them, but the ears did not stick out like humans did. If this thing had ears, they were they were tucked back a little mm -hmm. bit. Didn't have no pointed ears or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, have you ever gone back to that location? No, sir. No. 
I've still got a tree stand, arrows, and a flashlight. Somebody else may have found them, but I didn't go back. Mm -hmm. I've been all through that area. Yeah. And the other encounters that I've got coming up is within three miles of that. But I just don't have it in myself to go back up there by myself. You mentioned um, at one point your dad wanted to go back there. Yes, sir. And what, what happened when he, he wanted to go back there? What? Okay, I, th I was up there on the weekend. My dad calls me a Tuesday or Wednesday because we had hunted the weekend before I went by myself. And he said, hey, bud, he said, uh, let's go hunting this weekend. I said, nah. Dad, I'm going to LBL with a bunch of my buddies. I don't, I don't want to go up there. I said, you know, I'm just going to go out there. And I remember he got agitated at me. He said, son, why in the world are you leaving the hottest spot in the country? People would die to be in your shoes, you know. But I, I didn't have the courage. How do you tell your dad that you've seen a monster? Mm -hmm. You can't do that. And at that time, I was in denial. I just put it away. And I, I, I tried to keep it covered. And I did for years and years. And talking to you, I've, I've talked to you on the phone and, and then in person, and now this is the third time yes, sir. I've heard the story. I can hear the excitement, the passion, and almost the relief yeah. that finally now you're able to come forward yes, sir. publicly, yes. share this when before you wouldn't do it. No, no. I, I feel a sense of relief. Yeah, like right now I've got chills. And before, uh, a couple weeks ago, I broke down and told my wife, and I cried hysterically, and, and she thought something was bad wrong. I said, I got to tell you something. Because she's heard all me, my other stories and my dad's stories about these things. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I have to tell you something. Because I started having nightmares. I started listening to some certain Bigfoot shows. And it come flooding back. And I come out of the bed one night. This thing was after me again. And the next morning, I said, look, we got to talk. She had no idea what I was saying. Mm -hmm. But I cried. I mean, you... Uh, the only thing that really bothers me the most is uh monsters are real yeah. i'm not saying they're monsters they look human but mm -hmm. my god i don't see how a human can get that big and i think i told you this and trying to reassure you yes sir. i've done this a long time and i've interviewed other people that had close encounters like this yes and they they don't hurt us. No. Um, no. You hear some of these other shows. I think they, I think some people make stuff up. Yes. You know, but typically they don't want to be left alone. They're curious. It could have hurt you. Oh yeah, it could have got me easy. There should be some relief or peace of mind knowing it doesn't want to hurt you, and it left you be. Yes, it did. So I really feel you're safe to go back and hunt. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, as long as you respect them, which you did, yes, sir. it's going to respect you. Yeah. So I think you can continue on with your hunting. Yeah, and, I've, I've, and still can, I've still <laughs> hunted all over the place. <laughs> just not there. Uh, now, just last week, and I'll touch on this in a little while that I've told you, I went back to an area that's no more than, uh, it ain't no more than three miles. It's on the other side of the road. It's a huge valley. And... Uh, and I expected, uh, we've hunted this area too, no deer sign, no nothing, but I found some crazy stuff and it's just unbelievable what I found. And uh, I didn't run, you know, I kept going and looking for more. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I wanted to explain this to people, open your eyes and open your minds when you go to woods. Mm -hmm. It's there. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Before I seen trees broke off this and there and go right on, never pay attention. Last weekend when I went back, my mind was blown. Mm -hmm. I'm four and a half miles up a valley nobody goes to. You have to wade a creek almost, uh, it's above your knees. And so who's going to, you know, no. Uh, what about, mention the rock you found. Okay, uh, I've got pictures of this and I'll give them to you later. I'm going up through there and like I said, this was uh, this is about four, four and a half miles up through there. And I'm in a big valley and I come up, I started getting real kind of fidgety a little bit nervous because it's getting into a bunch of holly bushes because i've had an experience with those before and uh so i'm i'm just my senses are heightened and i'm really paying attention and i've got it on video i turned my video on because one time i heard something break could have been a bear because bears are thick in this area i've paid no mind so i'm i'm trudging up through there and i get to a spot and i'm looking around and everything and i look up on the hill to my right there's a rock it's about four inches thick, and this thing's massive. There's no cliffs where I'm at at this point. I'm still probably, it could be a mile or farther on up there, even if this area has any cliffs. This thing is leaned up against a, 
young beech tree that's no bigger than the small end of a baseball bat. It looks like a tombstone. Right above it are two trees broke off. One's broke off close to the ground. The other one's about four or five foot and it's broke off, but the road breaks. I've got it on video and camera. I go up there, but when I seen it, I said, oh my God, who, who walks up in the woods? And this rock is not a creek rock. It's not smooth. It looks like it's been broke off of a cliff, but it's leaned up against this little beech sapling and I, I've got it on video. I pulled the sapling away and you could see where it's wore into it. It's probably been, I would say late last fall, early this spring probably, cause you can see where the trees, maybe the wind blowed or right. something. And then after that, I find three rocks in the middle of nowhere, three rocks way bigger than a football. They're stacked on top of each other. Yeah. And I'm in an area nobody goes cause you have to wait a creek, you know, almost to your waist. Yeah. Well, that's, those are good signs. Uh, those are, could be markers, them yep. marking their territory. Uh, we don't know, uh, but we do find things like that where there's been Bigfoot sightings. And then you also mentioned another great story. I think it was LBL. You went hunting there with a friend. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. After this, my dad calls me like we was talking and said, hey, you know, why are you leaving? You know, people would die to have your spot. I didn't have heart to tell him. You can't tell somebody that what you've seen. I tried to block it out like it didn't happen. Oh, uh, Thursday, we all tear out, go to LBL. We're over there hunting. We're on Wrangler's, Wrangler's Camp, Wrangler's Loop or something like that. But I was hunting over close to the ATV trails. And if anybody's over there, you, you'll know the rough area that I'm talking about. We had an agreement in camp. Hey, if anybody sees a small doe, shoot it. We'll cut it up and tag it for, you know, but have camp meat to eat on. We was over there for a week. So, uh... Second night over there, that evening, probably four or five o'clock, I stick one, about 30, 40 yards quarter away, and I gut shot this thing. I mean, it is a bad shot. And, but anyway, it hit its back leg, and when it run off, I ain't gonna get into any details, but it, I knew it wasn't gonna make it. So we all had radios. I said, look, I've shot one, and here in a little bit, everybody just keep hunting, and later this evening, we'll go look for it. So we all get back to camp. My uncle's out there with me. And uh, my buddy, I said, hey, let's go. So my uncle, we get in the truck and drive around through there. And I could see where it come off the bank and cross the road. You could see where the hoofs had dug into the bank and you could see blood. I said, we'll bail out here. We did. And at this time, it's right at dark. It's dusky dark. You couldn't, uh, you had to, I had a headlamp on. So anyway, we drop off the bank. The bank's probably about 20 feet long at a pretty good two to one slope and get down. It's about 30 yards off from where it come off the bank and a bunch of saplings. So get there and I'm like, heck yeah, man. So I give my buddy my tag and he's tagging it and I'm gutting it and everything. And about that time, Coyote started up. And I said, oh my God, man, did you hear that? And he said, yeah, that ain't good. But they were on the hillside from where I was hunting. Then they kept getting louder and louder. And then you could hear them come off the bank and the bank where it come off across the road on the other side of the road was real steep. But I'm not lying. We could hear its claws on the asphalt. We could hear them coming. Mm -hmm. And when they tore off that bank, it's dark by now. We climbed two trees side by side. These little trees ain't gonna hold us. I mean, they're, I mean, that's the only tree I had to get up. Coyotes are coming. I'm not gonna stand by a deer. I've got blood all over me. We shoot up these trees. I turned my head up off. And I told you, I don't know what good that done, but we turned them off and them things are tearing this deer all to pieces. And it ain't 10 yards behind us. And I'm, I mean, I'm about ready to cry. My buddy's freaking out. We're hollering and screaming, trying to get him. The hit don't phase him. All of a sudden we hear a scream about where these coyotes started. They stopped. And I mean, hits black. You can't see your hand in front of your face. And then again, it, it screams and it's at the top of the road or at the top of the hill where it come down across the road. When it screamed that time, I told you it's a growl and a scream combined. You can't, they ain't no other thing Bears don't sound like that, coyote, wolf. I don't care what you say. I know what I heard and so does my buddy. But these coyotes, to explain, the, the deer and the coyotes are to her back and at about a four o'clock position is the road. All right, we're hanging on. I'm thinking, oh my God, my tree's gonna break out and I'm gonna fall. When that thing screamed, but when it took off running coming off the bank, it sounded like a boulder flipping, but every time you could hear the thump. And when we heard the feet fall hit the road, you could literally hear thumping. I mean, just a boom, boom. I told him, I said, I can't do this no more. I bailed out of the tree and took off running. And he was right beside me and I knowed where to go to get to the AT trail road, ATV trail road is. 
And I knew to get to that and turn to the right and it wasn't 50 yards to the highway. We're just in a little V from the ATV trail and the road. We get up there, we didn't know it, but my uncle dropped us off. He got up there on the hill a quarter mile away and fell asleep. But the screaming, not of the coyotes, but whatever this was, woke him up. He comes barreling down there. We're in the middle of the road screaming frantically. We ain't 100 yards from where the deer was at over the hill. I've got blood all over me. So does my buddy. He pulls up and says, get in. I said, no way. We jump in the back and beat on the glass, just telling him, scream, just go, go, go. He drives up about a mile, pull, tries to pull over, and we're screaming, no, just keep going. We're fine. Just keep going. We get back to camp. Everybody's... You get that rolling of the eyes and this and that. But me and him both, we kept talking in the back of that truck. You tell me what scares off more than a dozen coyotes on a fresh kill. Mm -hmm. And they run from it. Right. At LBL. LBL, the famous, I quote, <laughs> LBL. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, chances are it was a dog man or a Bigfoot. Yes, sir. Uh, I know no. the scream. Uh, you can't, uh, I've listened to a bunch of Bigfoot shows and I still haven't had that scream that I heard. I guess they all could make different sounds. But uh, after that, we didn't even go back and look for the deer. I knew not to because they wouldn't have been nothing left of it. Right. So I'd say it took it. I don't know. I didn't go back. I wasn't going to. My buddy, I asked him if he wanted to go back. He said, are you stupid? And I said, well, I wasn't going back anyway. Yeah. So that trip goes uneventful and we come back home. And then the next story I want to tell is, uh, I may bounce around a little bit, but That's this okay. is me and my wife. We're up in Daniel Boone National Forest and there's parking a place you can camp and there's parks up through there so we go up there this is in the end of may cold in the mornings gets warm in the afternoon you starting to get a few thunderstorms so we'd went up there had my tent my dad gave us some rope lots because my wife's terrified of snakes in the dark and we're we ain't 20 feet off from the creek and if anybody goes to campgrounds how they'll have like these cross ties that they build up and level off so you can pitch a tent well, I've got a tobacco stick out because I used to build a lot of furniture and neat stuff out of that thing. So I always carried a few just to use for whatever walking sticks. So I'm leveling off. I throw the tent up, get the solar rope lights and put out. My wife walks up behind me and said, where'd you get them shoes at? I said, what shoes? And she pointed and not five feet from the tent that I just set up no more than 15 minutes ago. There's two pair of wet shoes sitting there. And I swear to God, I'm not lying. You can ask my wife, these shoes come out of nowhere. I mean, nowhere. And we're, we're thinking, I'm thinking, oh my God, what is going on here? Is this paranormal? And we had heard, my wife's mom had always talked, this place was haunted big time. And across the road, from where we're at, probably 250 yards, yeah, two, 250 yards, there's a graveyard uh, from all the old settlers back in the day. And I mean, this graveyard's 17, 1800s. So we're there and I'm trying to block it out and she's scared to death. So it's getting dark, I, I ramp up the fire, and if anybody knows them camping sites, looks like a half a tractor trailer wheel, and it's got mm -hmm. a grate that folds over. Yeah. So man, we're cooking hot dogs, we're eating down the back of my mind, I'm thinking, where the hell these shoes come from? My wife's thinking the same thing, she don't tell me at the time, we get talking about this after we get home. And I'm puzzled, I can't figure it out. I swear I'm not lying, these things were wet like somebody pulled them out of the creek, walked up there and set it down. But we didn't see nothing, they wasn't there when we pulled in. <laughs> this is God's honest truth. That was creepy. Yes, it was creepy. It scared us to death. She wanted to leave, and I told her, no, it'd be all right. I'll ramp the fire up. Well, <laughs> that didn't go too good. So we eat and everything. It's getting up about 10 o'clock, okay, to kind of give a reference where I was at. My back's to the tent. My truck's behind my wife. She's on the other side of the fire pit from me. The creek's 20 yards to the left, and there's like six steps that go down. About 10 o'clock, she's got one of my tobacco sticks. Man, she's over her, just happy and everything. She's poking the fire. Then all of a sudden, the god awful scream come out. It starts out real low and then holds it up real high like a siren pitch. And then just stops. I heard it. And she heard, but she didn't make a reaction at that time. And I thought, what in the world was that? And it wasn't 15, 20 seconds. This thing done it again. I don't know if the first time it wasn't just facing where we was at, but the second time it was louder. Man, she's poking that fire and she stops and she said, "Huh? what is that? And when she's saying it, this thing has reached that. And I've heard this on like the Sierra sounds and stuff. Starts out with a and then it gets real high and holds it like a siren. And she said, "Huh? why would there be sirens up here? I said, they ain't no sirens up here. We didn't know at the time, but we had this whole valley to ourselves. There's camp, there's probably six or eight 
by the creek campsites. Then on up there, there's two campgrounds that'll probably hold 30 campers or tents. We didn't know at the time, we was all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I told her ain't no sirens. The third time it done it, I know it was closer this time. It's on the same side of the road of us, but across the creek and up in this holler where I told you I went and found all these rocks and stuff. When this thing, you could hear the guttural sound of just the deep, just from it sound like from the bottom of its gut, and it just reach a it reaches a pitch, a pitch like a siren does, and holds it for eight to ten seconds and mm -hmm. then stops. Mm -hmm. So I said, uh, "Okay, hon." I said, "Somebody's up here. Get in the truck. Let's go up here. Somebody's goofing off." We get in the truck and drive up there. It's a ghost town. They ain't nobody up there. I've got the windows down and I don't hear no more sounds. Mm -hmm. So we go up there and come back. She said, "Hun, can we just go on home?" I said, "No." Honey, I said, I'll build up, I'll stoke up this fire. His 11 o'clock or a little after. Man, I get this thing raging. We get settled in. I've got, an old, I got a pair of ball shorts. We get in a sleeping bag. And I fall asleep and she don't. And I, she says, sleep probably 15, 20 minutes. And I'm not lying. She hit me with everything she had in the chest. And I come up out of that bag. She said, oh my God, somebody's behind the tent talking. And I'm freaking out. I thought, holy shit, somebody snuck up here on us. So I'm listening, you could hear stuff. And I can't tell if it's behind the tent because the road ain't 20 yards. And so I get my flashlight, I don't have a headlamp, I get my flashlight, pistol, and I barrel out of that thing and run back through the woods about 40 yards and she's screaming, get back in the tent, get back in the tent. And I just, I don't know, I just, I thought I was gonna catch somebody. She said she could hear them talking, but it was like they was, whisper, they was whispering. And it was, she said it was just garbled but she could hear it wasn't one, mm -hmm. it was two making this sound. I go barreling back there about 40 yards and I realize you're stupid. I've only got a pair of ball shorts on, it's cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh my God, you shouldn't have done this. So man, I'm shining around and everything. So as I turn and go back, probably 10 yards to the gravel road, it's where the creek comes close to the road. And on the other side of the gravel, I could hear something parallel me as I'm coming back. But in my mind, I'm thinking, I ah, could be a bear cause man, they're thick up there now. So I just kind of shrug it off, get back. She's ready to go. And I said, no, it's late. Let's just go to sleep. So we go to sleep. And then all night long across that creek, something would pace up and down the creek, up and down the creek, just making a ruh, ruh. Them sounds all night long, mm. all night long. But I'll touch on a funny point with her. She loves whippoorwills. And she said, oh, I wish we'd hear a whippoorwill. And... There was one fired off about at the graveyard. This sucker comes five feet of camp. And, and it, it would fire up and go off, and I was about ready to kill this thing. And she, we was both laughing and stuff, so we lay down. But anyway, I didn't sleep hardly at night. All up and down the creek, it was just making these crazy sounds. Never heard, heard no more screaming after that. Never heard uh, any wood knocks or nothing. It could have been a bear, I don't know, but this thing was just making like growling grunt sounds, but it would, you could hear it pace up and down the bank because you could tell the where the sounds were coming mm -hmm. back and forth. Next morning we get up, man, she's pitching stiff and stuffed in the back of the truck. She's ready to go home. And I'll take them six steps down. I'm looking at the creek and where the creek gets up, it'll wash out the bank and you can see the vines and roots and stuff. And there's a little ledge of moss and stuff up there, but I'd had to wade the creek. Hey, it wasn't real deep. I would. It wouldn't have been over my knees. I was gonna go over her. But in the back of my mind, the shoes were still sitting there. And uh, I thought, I'm gonna go over and grab them. And then I started thinking, no, I'm not touching those shoes. I don't know where they come from. But these shoes were blue. They were dark blue, almost like a almost like a Converse Chuck looking, but it wasn't. It was an old cheap pair of shoes. They were dark blue, but these things were soaking wet. Still had water on the inside of the shoes. We throw stuff in the back of the truck and we're gone get back her mom says oh my god that place has been haunted you should have never went up there but i ain't three miles from where i have my 30 yard encounter right. and then up this valley we hear three screams that i can't explain so let me touch on that get back telling my dad my dad's had all kinds of encounters told my dad about it. he gets worked up so he starts going through sounds and he calls me he said hey bub come out here a minute he said i got i want you to listen to something i go out there and he's got got all these sounds he's playing them and I'm not lying to you. He hit one, I said, that's it. Same exact sound, guttural, high pitch, and just a scream, it holds way up here. I said, dad, hold that, I'll be back in a minute. I went and got my wife come back, and we walked in. I said, all right, have I said anything about this? You said, she said, no, what are you talking about? She said, you said something about sounds. I said, I want you to listen to this. 
She listened to the first, second, and third. It was the fourth or fifth one. And as soon as it done it, she said, that's it. <laughs> and it was supposedly Bigfoot sounds from out west. The same guttural bottom, but a high-pitched siren scream, 8, 10 seconds. The same exact sound. Mm. So if these are fake, how did somebody come from out there? How did they come to Macquarie County up on the creek and make these sounds? <laughs> yeah, it's doubtful. It's, uh, yeah, well. It, it could have been that one of those Bigfoots you've seen uh you know earlier in your life yeah that was they're still there yes sir that you know they're living breathing population they reproduce they stay in the same counties yes uh from my experience uh, so they could could have been yeah uh, some of those same bigfoot that are in that county yes sir uh, i, I want to touch on a couple more and I'll, I'll do them real quick yeah sure my dad's young they live in the same region on big south fork it's my grandpa my dad a couple of his brothers their next door neighbor and one of those boys or something they go down in on the river and in this area there used to be mining camp houses everywhere but they were abandoned back in the 40s and 50s okay they get down there coon hunting and it starts storming that night lightning thunder and raining the coon dogs get in a fight with something dad says he remembers you know the god awful sounds coming the coon dogs hit the river and go back across and up the mountain to where dad and him live well they go to seek shelter in this old mining house. They run inside and they go upstairs and whatever that was outside comes in the house on them, tearing the house all to hell. And Dad said, it's breaking stuff. And my grandpa and his neighbor, they would, I don't know how old they'd have been back then, I'm not really sure, but they had the old carbide mining lights and they don't shine very bright. But Dad said, that he remembered he'd walk over and his, his, my grandpa would say, son, get over in the corner, stay in the corner. And that old mining light that they had on, both of them had one, would shine down. This thing never ventured into the light, but it would leave the house and come back in, breaking and tearing stuff all to pieces. Next morning, they stayed the daylight, and they get and they got an old boat that they take back across the river and go home. And then the next one I've got is probably three miles. The uh, South Fork flows north, so it'll it'll be three miles north of there. It's in an area, I ain't going to give no names, but there's a cliff there. And my, if my dad wasn't there at this time. It was uh, three of his brothers and a brother-in-law. They got coon dogs down there. Got no wooden boat tied up the bank and they're under this cliff. And they've got trot lines, run, limb lines, whatever, and coon hunting. These dogs are up there under the cliff and something just around the hill starts screaming or something. The dogs take off and they get in a fight. These dogs go down and hit the river. And at this mm -hmm. time, my one of my dad's brothers was there a few years, well, yeah, several years. He was probably a late teenager, early 20s then. But he was telling me, it reminded him of that, and he's thinking, oh, my God. Well, this thing comes to the top of the cliff and is breaking stuff and screaming and hollering. And they'd try to lean out and look, but they was all terrified. He would do it a little while and go away. Well, finally, the second or third time it kind of calmed down, they all got brave and was leaning out, and they all had guns and started to go up to the, uh, the side of the cliff and get on top, but none of them never could get brave enough. And I guess whatever this was, seen them or heard them, this thing really got pissed off and is making all sorts of uh, screams and hollering, breaking stuff. And I remember my uncle, uh, is my dad's baby brother, he ain't here no more. But I remember, and I watched him tell this, and he'd tear up and cry and hair stand up on his arms. He looked at him and said, boys, I can't take it no more. And this is like one or two o'clock in the morning. He tears off running out of that cliff over the bank, no flashlight, no lantern or nothing to find the boat. He said, I can't take it no more. He took off running. Well, they all bail out after him and go down and they all get in the boat and paddle across and then walk two or three miles back up the river and then top of the ridge and they get my grandpa and they go back down the next day and under that cliff hit was their stuff was tore all to pieces no bear tracks no nothing like that so <laughs> well wow. all, all this stuff is in the same area same area yeah yes, sir yeah and i'm i really i cannot thank you enough oh yeah for sharing your story yes sir stories um i think other people w will appreciate this if they have a story like yours, yes, sir. You I need, hope I need, hope they come forward. You need to talk about it. It helps. And I got to the point, it really bothered me because I tried to talk to my close friends and you got the rolling of the eyes and laugh at you. Mm -hmm. And people don't know what that feels like unless you've been in my shoes. It's humiliating. Mm -hmm. You feel like an idiot. They want to make, I don't know if they're trying to make you feel like an idiot or yourself treat you that way. And then finally, 
I, you know, that's why I wanted your number. I said, I told my wife, I said, I've got to do this. I can't hide it no more. I can't. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad I can help you yes, sir. in any way possible. And I think you will help other people yes. listen to your story. Yes. And if they had a traumatic experience, a close encounter, they will come out, share it. The more you can talk about it, yes, it's, it's a healing process. Yes, it is. And, that, you know, a long time I denied that. I really did. I wouldn't even tell my dad. My dad's a preacher. Mm -hmm. How do you tell a preacher that uh, seven, then, or I mean, sorry, I ain't not that monster is real. How yeah. do you say that? Yeah, you, you don't. <laughs> hey, yeah, you don't. I mean, um, but anyway, um, I really appreciate you sharing this story. And um, if anything else comes up, keep my number. Yes, sir. And, um, I've got, that ain't all my stories. I'll get with you later. <laughs> okay, well. I, I told you about the one where you can hear and see the footsteps moving in the leaves. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, 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 get, we'll, together on we'll that. get together more for yes, sure. Sir. But again. I, I appreciate everything, Charlie. I really do. You're welcome. Thank you so much again. Yes, sir. Thank you.